This is the biggest bull elk I've ever seen in my life, much less had a chance to kill. Well, I'm here talking with Steve Felix. This is the, the hunter who has killed the pending world record elk, archery elk. We have the good fortune of having our conversation in the Boone and Crockett Club's um, headquarters in Missoula, Montana, in front of the collection of world record heads. So it's a pretty nice and fitting place to, to talk to you. Thanks for making it work. It is. Thanks for having me. So take me to that day, September 10th. September 10th, yep. I, uh, I had traveled over from Sealy Lake the, the, the day before. Beautiful, beautiful morning, strong south wind, um, temperature probably in the mid 40s by now. And I was going to sit down and have a sandwich, um, a candy bar, and drink some Gatorade. Took my pack off, took my, my jacket off, and I heard a little bugle close. And I went, boy, they're right here. And I put my glasses up and it took me about 30 seconds and I spotted the ball and I went, oh man, that's a big ball. You know, because he was standing broadside and the thing that really jumped out to me was, was his third point and then I knew he was a seven on both sides, it was obvious. And it was like, and there was no question that that was going to be a ball that I was going to try and get close to. How far away was he? Then? I would say 400 yards, so he wasn't a long ways away. There. And I knocked an arrow and I, and I I had my pack on and I was just kind of sneaking along and I peeked up over and he wasn't there. So I just said, so I just, I just stood there at my bowl and it, it never dawned on me to try to call because a, a quality of bull like that, especially in that country, you're not going to call him in. So I was very, I was cautious not to do that. When it was strong, I said, wait right here. He was pretty comfortable here. He may come back here. I said, sure enough, he started, he started on the line. I said, he's going to come right down to me. So I got my rangefinder, and I, I, there was a tree down in there about 80 yards away. And, and this takes him a while to get, he, it takes him a while to get there, though. He's, he's slow, and it's shaded down in here, so it's cool. And I know he wants to be here. And he's, I said, he's either going to walk right to me or he's going to walk right down there. And he's about 90 yards, and he's about 80, and then he's at 70. He's at 65 yards, he's at 64 yards, and he's perfectly broadside. And, and, I'm, and I'm contemplating whether or not I should shoot. And, I, and I, I'll be honest with you, I strongly consider not shooting. He's at 62, and then he's at 61 yards, and he's directly across from me. He's got his head down, his front shoulders forward, and he's feeding. And I said, it's now or never. So I just, I just positioned myself, and I drew, and I was steady. Wind was still very favorable. Um, I didn't think the wind would affect my shot, and I let the arrow go. And I'll never forget watching that arrow fly towards that elk. I killed him at 61 yards. Spot and stock. Heard him bugling this morning. Took me a couple hours to find him and get on, get in on him. Made a decent shot. He went about 80 yards and was dead within 30 seconds. <clears throat> I'm guessing he's 380 plus. I don't know. I've never put my hands around an elk this big on the ground. Um, now the hard part starts. Um, it's warm. I got a ways to go. Try to get some selfie pictures here the best I can. But I'm by myself. Um, a lot of emotion here in the last hour.